Thank you, Marco. Thank you for the introduction. Um, really sorry I can't be there. Unfortunately, I live in South Africa and got uh, locked down until uh, Friday, and at oh, that stage it was too late. But um, hopefully we'll be able to share some information with everyone um, and would love to um, speak to anyone after the conversation if there's any more information that's, that's needed and just to tell you a little bit more about our journey. Um, so some slides for Peace Parks Foundation. We were founded in 1997 by uh, the men on the screen there, um, Nelson Mandela, Dr. Anton Rupert and Prince Bernard of the Netherlands. And ultimately the, the vision was to create uh, transfrontier conservation areas, which superseded global boundaries. It um, looked at the areas in which biodiversity naturally occurred. Almost an Einstellung. And, 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 and ultimately, our, our goal is to reconnect Africa's wild spaces to create a future for man in harmony with nature. Now, we run a, a slightly different model to, to African parks, as was described, um, but similar challenges faced. In these transfrontier conservation areas, um, which span about 100 million hectares in total in southern Africa, which is twice the size of Spain, um, we focus on four priority uh, transfrontier conservation areas, which is about 64 million hectares across nine countries. And within those, we have co-management agreements with the governments um, with which we operate. And ultimately, our, our model of co-management uh, looks to partner with the governments on the ground and with the communities on the ground to create sustainable large-scale landscapes. And, and, and that's really the, the unique selling point is the large scale conservation. And fundamentally, that requires a lot of partnership. And we work with a lot of key donors um, and, and uh, key funders, uh, Command Foundation, MARVA, um, KFW, AFD, DFRs. And, and we're starting to engage now with the, the private sector. And, and what my mandate is, is to look at commercial ways to fund conservation moving away from a donor model and uh, looking at commercial streams there. But uh, as was described earlier, donor funding is very, very important because there's a lot of um, costs of conservation which aren't cash generative. But within those areas, there are cash generative pockets. And that's really what we are looking to expand upon at Peace Parks Foundation. And that's really why my division was capacitated, which is the Innovative Conservation Finance Division. So ultimately, as Marco was saying, there's, there's natural capital. And, and we, we ultimately are natural capital asset managers. That's fundamentally what we are. And the, the value flows ultimately are we mobilize capital and, and we uh, undertake implementation. Um, implementation for nature-based solutions with the three goals, which are conservation at scale, community development, and commercialization. Now, once you do this implementation, you create value. You create value through ecosystem services. There's co-benefits um, which come in various forms. So regulation of processes such as carbon sequestration, such as air quality, water quality, soil formation. Um, th then there's materials, uh, which is ultimately the use of what the land produces, which can be provision of wood, provision of food, etc. And then non-material benefits such as connectedness to nature, the feeling of being with uh, within nature and, and the mental health benefits of that have been demonstrated very clearly over the last uh, two years of, of COVID and not being able to access that. All this translates into some co-benefits uh, and ultimately this the triple threat that we try and address is the socio-economic development, which is the livelihoods and global stability, net biodiversity gain and climate change mitigation. Now that's all very well and, and good, but, but what does it actually mean? What does it mean in process? So these ecosystem services, yes, they create co-benefits, but how do we fund them without looking at donors to keep putting their hands in their pocket for eternity? Um, how can we look at funding these, um, these benefits, which are valuable to people, but are just not priced at this stage? And the way I'm starting to think about it, we starting to think about it at Peace Parks is there are direct landscape value um, items and there are, uh, uh, benefits which are of global value. So, so the direct landscape value is ultimately things that are landscape dependent cash flows. So carbon projects, and a, a great example is in Kafui Zambezi, 
um, which is in Zambia, 4 million hectares of development of a Red Plus program. That can self-sustain itself. It can generate credits which are able to be sold into market and that money can be recycled into the project and the nature-based solutions. Um, tourism is another example. We've got um, examples in Maputo Special Reserve in Mozambique, such as Anvil Bay, which generates uh, revenue through tourism income and infrastructure. So there's items such as uh, renewable power. Um, uh, in, in Malawi, for example, there's a power station called the Wavwe Power Station, which is, sits on the border of Nika National Park. This, my background is actually a view of Nika National Park. And Nika is a massive watershed, 100,000 hectares of watershed with four rivers that feed into Lake Malawi, upon which 2 million people rely. And that, that single landscape produces approximately 10% of the water for that, um, that lake. And on that is a, a power station which generates um, electricity, which is dependent on the quality of the water flow. So if you can find funding streams to expand the capacity of that, um, it is incentivized in that funding to apply a portion of that to the conservation of that watershed, because that means your run of river is higher and your revenue is high and you consequently get a higher financial return. Then there's one specifically I would like to just um, highlight now from a global perspective. So yes, there's a lot of landscape value that we, we deliver, um, but these are massive carbon sinks and they're massive stores of biodiversity, which has value. And that biodiversity, um, we approached a, um, a Swiss bank, Union Bank Air Privé, um, and we've just recently raised a, a biodiversity restoration fund. And Basically, how that works is it is a long equity fund which invests in nature positive equities. But the key selling point is that we have partnered, UBP has partnered with Peace Parks Foundation and with Cambridge Conservation Initiative. And ultimately, we deliver three types of biodiversity a financial biodiversity and nature positive equity, on the ground biodiversity restoration through conservation activities in Africa, and then academic biodiversity in best practice and delivering um, the tools and the analyses that we require to start to measure and, and package these, these items. And we, we launched uh, in September, we've grown, uh, launched at $73 million, grown to $85 million. And um, the, the, the real interesting uh, investor case here is as an investor, you can place your assets in this fund and take a global return you don't sacrifice your return at all. Um, the fund itself shares its management fee and its performance fee and reports back on that from a biodiversity perspective. So as an investor, you have an asset allocation division uh, decision. But what we've said is that there are parties out there who not only want to get a financial return, but they are incentivized for a conservation outcome. So we've created a share class uh, called the N1 Plus share class, which ultimately as an investor, you can elect to that share class and that will uh, take 1% extra management fee, which goes directly into conservation. So you can sacrifice 1% um, of your acquis return, um, hopefully an outperformance by the fund, which, which hope, uh, UBP's impact funds have all outperformed the benchmarks to date. Um, but fundamentally you will be um, financing conservation directly and the, the reason why a structure like this works is that investors are starting to realize that natural capital has a value. And even though some of the projects on the ground, which are direct landscape linked, are not easily accessible to retail investors, products like this exist because they create value in addition to the financial returns which people are seeking. They create a long-term biodiversity return. Um, and that is something that is valuable and now we've got a price for it. And I think with that, um, I invite any, anyone to um, approach me, contact me and um, let me know if you've got any questions about how we starting to think about conservation finance. And I'd like to say uh, thank you to Mark and thank you to the NOAA organizers for allowing me to present here today. And I look forward to um, speaking to you all.